Ah, g'day preppers. Just wanted to talk about the ricotto chili bush today. As far as I'm concerned, the ricotto is the holy grail of chili plants. Um, if you like your chilies and you like them reasonably hot but not crazy hot, the ricotto I find is the, the perfect chili for general all round cooking. And uh, being a perennial plant, uh, this bush here that you see has, um, has been here for about six years, maybe seven years. And uh, I've constantly hacked it down, pruned it right back. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's not just a, uh, a ricotto chili tree. It's, it's, the ricotto is actually like a sprawling plant. If uh, you just let it sprawl along the ground, it will cover 20, 30 feet and um, it'll just keep going and uh, quite amazing so the the actual plant is the center of the plant is right there but uh, because i'm pruning over that side the majority of overgrowth is all leaning over to this side so but uh yeah i, I think ricotta chilies are great i've been picking a whole bunch recently just for um making a chili sauce but uh, as you can see here is uh, clusters of ricotta chilies um, these are the nice rounded type more of the bell si uh, shape rather than the the elongated ricotta I find these are the um, when I first got this plant it was uh, from a grower interstate and uh, I got the plant shipped over to me and since then I've been propagating ricotto chili plants uh, to give away to people but as you can see they're, they're just everywhere and uh, you know they very much look like you know mini apples as you as the um, Spanish name suggests so the main thing I, I really like about the ricotta chili is that it's I've got chilies almost all year round it's a very cold hardy chili plant it loves a little bit of sunshine but it also loves a little bit of cold weather and uh, it's just an endless supply of chilies in fact there is uh, times of the year when it's just going to be just way too many like you can see all the the nice purple flowers here so they're all going to be chilies and uh, and uh, it's uh, like a hundred percent strike rate as far as pollination is concerned so they're certainly going to be there and so it goes in batches like I, I showed you these ones uh, these are all ready to go I can I can pick all this and make myself a batch of chili sauce here's a, a f the fresh batch that will come up in a uh, another month's time or so and it's just a, a constant flow of uh, chilies and uh, I don't eat a whole heap of chilies but uh, when I want chilies I, I you know I just enjoy having a chili bush out the back where I can just come and pick um, chilies anytime I need or you know and especially uh, with friends if they want a bag of chilies I always send them away with a bag of chilies but uh, so what I'm doing today is it's we're in February and uh, it's uh, the last month of summer so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to take a few, I've picked a few uh, ricotta chilies and I'm going to re-sow the seeds and so all I do, there's a lot of people will, will tell you that the best way to grow ricotta chilies is with bottom heat and so on but um, I'm just, uh, this is how I do it, I just pick my seeds, I put three rows of seeds in um, hopefully most of them will germinate and then I'll transplant those seedlings into little pots but uh, and another thing I do is um, if I don't want to transfer them into little pots if I don't have anywhere to plant them um, I'll just thin out the the weaker ones and I'll let the stronger ones start establishing in this pot because it's it's big enough to um, to grow the ricottos um, plants at least for one or two years but uh, preferably uh, come spring in about six months time I'd like to remove a couple and put them out the front so I've got myself a couple of nice specimens of ricotta chili really nice big ones here um, very beautiful 
I've picked them, you know, a little bit before they have a chance to, you know, start softening up. This is about perfect uh, ripeness for eating right now. So I'll take a few seeds out of each one and we'll uh, line up our little seed tray. Okay, so here we go. I've cut open one. You can see the nice little good sized black seeds in there. And so I'll take a few of these out. Probably a good idea to wear gloves um, or just remember to really wash your hands really well because if you scratch your eyes or something like that, rub your eyes, you'll uh, you'll get you'll get that chili into your eyes and uh, it really burns and it's sort of uh, ricotta chili kind of does kind of linger on your fingers and skin for quite some time so you'll be surprised I've cut open ricotta chilies and um, wash my hands and a few hours later rub my eyes and I've still gotten chili into my eyes so that'll do for that one and this one here I should have uh, should have got my little tripod or something but we're getting there bit rough but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day we get a pretty good strike rate so I'll just cover with some more seed raising mix so I like I prefer to use seed raising mix um, rather than just dirt because you know the dirt can have contaminants and stuff and so but usually I three quarters of the pot I fill it up with regular soil or compost whatever you like and then just uh, top it off with seed raising mix on top and of course when we're done growing these seedlings you know you can throw this whole mix into one of your veggie beds just to add a little bit more fine soil to your bed all right well that's it and uh, I'll give it a light water and and what I'll do is I'll get some clear plastic film and I'll cover the top with it and that way we've got ourselves a little bit of incubation heat under the plastic there and until uh, we got some seedlings sprouted and then we can let it out into the open air but uh, yeah so I'll just um, I'll leave this in the sun while it's daytime and then I'll probably put it under cover with the plastic over the top and uh, we'll see how we go in a couple of weeks okay here we are two weeks later exactly 14 days and time to remove the cover off the seeds and there we go we've got uh, a nice little batch of ricotta chilies now you might be able to see that there are some of them are, are quite leggy and that's because I probably uh, should have taken off the cover and put it out in the sunshine probably a couple of days ago but I forgot all about them and uh, luckily I remember today so hopefully they won't get too leggy before you know or hopefully the Sun will um, you know make them grow nice now but uh, yeah so as I said before the uh, Ricotta chilies, uh, a lot of people make a, a big fuss about them when they're trying to grow them from seed. Some find them very hard um, to grow. Um, you know, uh, most people will say to use bottom heat. Well, you know, just depending on where you are. If you're in a cold area, um, then uh, yeah, but I suggest growing them, you know, sometime at the end, towards the end of summer. So it's not too hot, but it's still warm. And uh, yeah. Um, so there we go we got 
pretty good strike rate actually you know I'd say uh, close to 90% strike rate at least who knows maybe even 100 but uh, about four days ago I noticed one come up and I, I thought that might be the only one it might have been a bad batch but uh, then all of a sudden these just noticed these today so there you go all right well I'll leave these out now in the sunshine might give them a, a little bit of a liquid feed just to give them a bit of a boost because the the um, seed raising mix is actually doesn't really have any nutrients in it so until the roots actually get down into the soil where there might be some some uh, nice nutrients I'll yeah just give it a bit of a liquid feed and maybe uh, see if we can strengthen up the roots and then we'll just uh, let them grow up a bit and go to the next stage about three weeks into it and uh, as you can see the the plants have really bushied up the stems are starting to get a nice the nice purple color to them and uh, yeah much better than when they started off they were very leggy so yeah I um, I actually thinned out quite a lot of them and I, I did lose most of one row through some kind of insect sort of you know they they chop the stems in half um, but uh, yeah I've, I've still got more than I'm going to need so I'm probably just going to select the best ones and uh, and I'll probably just thin out a, thin it out a little bit more well my ricotto chilies are, are you know have done really really well unfortunately I left them on the ground and the chickens got out and so they ate pretty much all the leaves they could get to they ate this one completely but even though it's as you can see there's new growth spurts so these ricotta are very hearty um plants so even if they get eaten up they're still they're still going so yeah so since they've been eaten up and they're doing okay still i'm just going to leave them now until i plant it out in spring i might as well just leave them in in the pot over winter because it's really not going to do you know much difference in the ground anyway uh, okay well i i keep ending up putting it on the ground and the chickens keep eating my leaves so i'm going to take one that i'm pretty happy with the structure and i'm just going to go and plant this out i've got you know probably a few too many um, but that's how I like to do it if I had more space I'd I'd put more chilies but um, I gave away three so that's all I can give away at the moment because uh, most of my friends have already um, stocked up on chilies and so yeah so I'm just going to plant this one in and because I really there's my chickens standing at the front, minding her own business. Now, yeah, I just wanted one out in the front garden just to, uh, instead of growing it up, I wanted to actually uh, let it sprawl along the ground um, it, so it can act like a ground mulch, you know, or a ground cover to protect the uh, soil because I'm starting to run out of mulch on the ground here. I just planted a new uh, little lemon tree. It's a Maya lemon. Um, because uh, I prefer the low acidic lemons so I just put that in so what I'll probably do is just down here I think I'll plant this there we go so that'll be pretty much all the chilies I'll ever need having two plants but after um, you know five or six years you do want to um, start thinking of you know growing a new fresh plant um, just in case you know you lose the original one it sort of um, dies down a little bit but it shouldn't okay so yeah the um as I said, it, that's going to, you know, it'll grow up a little bit, probably about up to two foot, and then it'll start hanging down and start sprawling. 
and all I'll be doing is just training it along the ground wherever I want it to grow and yeah just a uh, live ground cover and that's it so I'm looking forward to this lemon tree producing my old one which is about almost 50 years old um, just got uh, badly infected with disease and it was just too old so time for a new one this is actually a dwarf Maya lemon on a dwarf rootstock but yeah so that's the ricotto highly recommend growing ricotto chilies if you uh, enjoy eating chilies um, you just about get a depending on your climate um, if it's a relatively I think uh, here in Melbourne we're about a zone 8 equivalent to say US zones so uh, you know even zone 7 zone 6 um, I suppose once you get to zone 6 I suppose you might want to put it in a more sheltered position protect it from I don't know snow all right guys well that's the ricotto highly recommend growing them um, if anyone really wanted some seeds I could send you some seeds from a one pod um, just uh, send me a message and yeah I'll see what I can do especially if you're living in Australia I can certainly supply you with seeds nice and easily very quickly just uh, you can come down and just pick one up all right guys well keep prepping have fun and uh, I'll catch you next time